Nope. I, I muted my mic. It's important. Uh, yes, to unmute your shit. It's important, man. I like your mustache. Yeah, yeah boy. Boom. Ooh. You know when they have a, you know they have a little beard going. You know, I get, I I get that. that a little bit. I see that. I like it. I like it. It's like yeah. Uh, couple days into the joint. So, you know, they gave you a razor and they were like, I'm not shaving off. You got, wait, wait, you're gonna get it. You gotta, you gotta bring us back in after this time. Okay. okay, I'll bring it back in. All right. And, all right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we took a little hiatus because, well, Call of Duty. Um, we know, welcome back to Life on the Inside. You know, I'm, I'm Pex. Don't we know we're with you? We're uh, taking it to part two in our little series of No School, No Problem. This was originally supposed to be like two sides of the fence of uh, me not going to school and Noah going to school. But then we both realized you don't necessarily need it for what we do. <laughs> for sure. I don't think it um, – I mean, it'll teach you some valuable things. But it, a necessity, I think really it's – you could go to school for it and it's still not, you know, this, it's still not paying out. I think really where we're at is just, you got to have, got to have it in your soul. You, you do. do. Yeah. You, you got to have a little patience. So, so yeah, we're, uh, this one was school is cool. And I just ran with that. I liked the, uh, I liked the name. Caleb comes up with some, some good show names. I really like it. They <laughs> stick with me and I'm like, I can run with that. Uh, not very far. And okay. BT does. Yes. This is a mustache. It's not dirt. <clears throat> yeah, I, I have been showery. Got a little beard going over here, just a little bit. Um, yeah, Tina, yes. maybe shave the stash. I'm, I'm working on the stash. I want a stash so bad. I want one. My first remark when people come and they're like, they're "Like nice perv stash," and I'm like, "What the? F- okay, why? Have, why? Why is it that?" And then they'll revert like, "Hey, I like it." So I'm like, "Yeah, you hate it. I'm gonna. I'll have to shave it eventually. Don't shave but, it. Do it for the cost." You know, at least at least for a month, I think I might let it let it run. I like it. At least it until we go back for let everyone see it when we go back. Let everyone see it. You think I should? I think you should. Okay, I'm not good at hiding. You know, really my emotions, and I'll be able to tell, and I'll be like, "Hey, you'll probably see me with half a day, and then halfway through, it'll be gone." And I'll just be like, "What? I don't know what happened. No, I didn't shave." That's funny. All right, we do, we do keep razors at work for when. You staff come in looking like dirt. Just saying. Single blade razors. Single blade. Mm. No shaving cream. Mm-mm. We, for we some won't. reason, the water is turned off. Oh, no. Go well, dry shave. Go dry shave it. Yep. So uh, we're getting into this. This is a uh, Noah's parts. Um, we know what what we're doing. We're going over like what what happened. What went to college? Kind of just what's, what's going I'm on. I'm gonna take you through. Do a do really my my walk my college experience um, because it was a doozy. It was a doozy, and um, for many different reasons. I hope you learn something from it. So I will say I was not mature enough to go to college, and and my my college experience was what's the word um, unorthodox. We'll say that. It was I, that's, that's a good word, unorthodox. Yes. From the jump, my friend, and this will be news to you. So I went to Fort Hayes State University, which is about eight and a half hours from my hometown. That's a good that's a good little chunk. It's not too far, but you are far enough. You know, it's a day trip nonetheless. So I never visited the place. I literally started school that I I knew that I started on this Tuesday and we had orientation on Sunday. So I got there Saturday and said hello to everything. <laughs> so you can tell how well I plan my <laughs> life. He, he doesn't plan his life at all. At, at all. I mean, usually in, it's, it shows. And I know it's not a strong quality of mine, but that's what I did. Saturday got there. And said, oh, hello, Forest State. Met my roommate. Um, my mom was there. She dropped me off and set me up as well as any mother could, man. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> and thank you for still watching and listening. I love you. 
Yeah, so unorthodox and didn't didn't know where I was going, but I did know I was on a wrestling scholarship. I'm sorry, my dog is stalking its prey right now, and I'm gonna tell you there's nothing on the other side of it. I'm watching her. She's pointed, her tail's pointed, and there's there's nothing over there. Anyways, back at it. Um, so yeah, I should tell you I wasn't mature enough. I went there on a partial wrestling scholarship and I knew I had to do that you know in order for me to get what I got I had to wrestle I knew I had to do that and I knew I was there to do that so in my mind that's kind of that's really all I was focused about was wrestling so my first semester held a whopping 2.5 GPA Um, get it get it I I got I got B's in the classes that if you go to class you get an A so I will tell you that is that was my kryptonite was just simply making it to class. First semester, 2.5. Second semester, it got it got worse. Uh, I don't know how school is not that hard if you go to class. So if any young listener, I'm sure the people out there, just go to go to class. That is that is the name of the game. I feel like in where I went to college, at least was half of it in the in what I was going to graduate with, just got to go to class. Um, so where I kind of fell off the first few weeks, I was hanging out with, you know, different people and kind of branching out, blah, blah. And then wrestling started and got into the swing of it. So, you know, that's kind of the, the group of guys you, you run aw- around with. And I fell into a little older crowd. I was not hanging out with a freshman. That's not a, like, go me because it was really the worst probably thing for me um i there's one dude one amazing crazy dude that i ran around with named walter clark and that's not his real name but that's what i called him Uh, his name sounded like walter and he was a crazy mother freaker man he was crazy <laughs> so little background on this just so you understand the mentality of this dude and why i was drawn so close to him um was gonna go to oklahoma state university on a full ride scholarship right out of oklahoma so he's gonna go to one of the biggest best grindhouse wrestling programs in the nation uh, so you know this month is bad you know he's dirty on the mat he has that mentality of just a killer um, but he was my best and worst influence of my, of my college career, in my opinion, and, and definitely my freshman year of why I, I did what I did and I saw what I saw. Um, I went to school for teaching and coaching, but I was just running around with him. I was out at the bars every single night. I couldn't even drink, but God help us. We were finding a way. Um, he liked Kentucky Deluxe. He got a, He would get a pint of KD, which I think might run you 519, and I'm pretty sure he was getting it wired in from his girlfriend who lived in Arkansas. Um, so he was a crazy motherfucker who, drew, I say, drug me out. He was not, my arm was not twisted behind my back. Um, but I ran around with him, and I found myself in a big hole. Ultimately, um, I, I got my wrestling thing done as a red shirt, did, did well, competed, you know, but I slipped on the grades and I think it could have been, definitely could have been, it was my fault nonetheless, but these were, there were obvious grade checks throughout there where you're like, what, what are you doing, man? What, what the hell is going on? So lost my scholarship my second year oh. into it. Um, but luckily, I met my lovely wife in my second semester of my freshman year who really helped me get my ass in check. Um, I couldn't cut class to get ass because she was always like, what class are you supposed to be in? So that's a shitty, that's a bad saying, but there was a reason <laughs> I couldn't cut the class to hang out with the one I wanted to be with. So uh, she helped me get it back in gear. Uh, you know, I guess, sorry, I get trailed off on these, this guy, this, my best worst, worst ex- influence in my life. Um, so back on the school. <laughs> oh yeah. I, yeah. I'm talking about school here. <laughs> um, so school was cool. I was going to be teaching and coaching is what I've done. What I thought I was going to do the rest of my life. Love wrestling, still love wrestling to this day. Um, and love everything about the sport, but I, 
remember being in my class, and I believe I touched on it in your episode about how unengaged I was with what I was doing and how unfulfilled I really felt, at least in those classes. I never even gave it a chance to get to student teach, but I was there for, um, you know, I was there through three or four years of my degree, um, which is only a four year degree. Somehow it took me five, you know, I'm not sure, but okay, we got a piece of paper. Yes, we got the piece of paper. So I just remember being very, unfulfilled and in, in what I was doing and no disrespect to the physical educators out there and, and every wrestling coach. I mean, it's a grind and it's a big ladder, but it, you know, it's a very fulfilling and you do it because you love it. You know, it's really not one of those financially, unless you're you know, <laughs> Cuddy, did you see that rabbit? <laughs> yeah. You go, Hunting dog, you goober. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, got my degree in a general degree in, in health and human performance, which again is a lot of you know, study of the body, but I gained a lot of my work experience, at least just having a job through college where I, where I started and, and understood and really dove off to how much I enjoyed the 45 minutes to an hour and a half I had with somebody and really able to I heard, I heard that. Live on a like busy ass. Come on, yep, yep, okay. So um, I found out what I enjoyed and where I could you know, be successful. And I, I figured figured out there was a nice, you know, a good career um, in the service industry. Um, but yeah, I would say if I looking back, anything with school and I, I want to help the one soul out there that hears it and is like, wow, okay, so yeah, go to class, people. And do what you you want to do. I didn't set out to be. I didn't set out to be a restaurant manager. Do I love my job? Yeah. Do I love where I work? Love the people I've met? Absolutely. Do I you know, have fulfillment every day? For sure. But I would say just you know chase your dreams and don't sell yourself short. I think there's a reason that I went into college, or there's a reason I didn't plan. A, I jumped in the day of school starting and, and went to four A's. There's a reason I was in the degree I was in. I think it's just because that's what, I don't know, I sold myself short. I, I, I really do. I think I, I didn't set my set my sights quite high enough. Um, and it's, it's nothing and I'm still, still young as hell, but I, I think if I'm going to say anything, it's just go get it, go get what you want, go, go do what makes you, what makes you happy in, in your heart, whether it's, um, you know, financially everything for you or not. You want to say something? Yeah. I was waiting for you to finish. I was like, is, I felt like there's a nice wrap up in there. No, <laughs> well, like, you're saying that. And you no, know, I, I also didn't like think about or choose to be a restaurant manager, you know, like it just kind of happens. Like I went to school to be a band director. Like I also went to, to go teach and then, found out that it wasn't for me, but then I just like, just hung out in restaurants, whether that be fast food, bars, small restaurants, what have you to get me to where I am now. Like we didn't, we didn't plan on being here. Like in, in high school, we like, I feel like a lot of people that are good at this job don't plan on doing it. You know, that's, that's kind of what I think, like thinking back on it, like how many people like that are good at their job and are like running businesses uh, or restaurants planned on doing that like connor he's been at culver since i think he was like 15 or 16 and he just stuck with it now he's the gm he's part owner of another one and playing out anymore i don't think he plans on being at culver's forever but like, sure. he made a career out of it um same thing with with us like we we stuck with it we found out hey we, we enjoy it and now we're we're running a, a, a decently large business you know for sure no, I don't. It's and definitely no, no ill will. There's no negativity on, on me saying that. I just want to. I just think it's super important. I think it's super important to to look back and and be able to. You know, I have a daughter now. You know, I have another 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 life right here that I, I'm gonna help mold and and you know her decision making. So I just think it's very important to to push. You know, be able to push them towards their dreams because it's easy for people to be scared of failure and that you want to know a little bit of Mr. Doey Noe is uh you know being afraid to fail when the light when the light was shining and the 
thousands of people in the crowd and the light was right on you, man. It's that it's a big stage. And I was, a uh, it's a little afraid, afraid of failure. That's fair. And that's scary. I think, I don't know. I've never necessarily been like afraid of failure. I just don't think about it. Like it's not an option. Like failure is always an option. Like it literally you is. Don't think about it. Yeah, you I'll can't. think about it. You can't like, I'm just going like, we're going to do this because right. why not? Like I just go in like, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do this. Let's do it the way that we know how the best we can, you know, like just go in with that mindset of, yeah, you might, but go do it. You know, just, just do it. It is. It is a mindset. Yeah. 100%. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of moving back why I love, again, love this industry and love where I'm at. I mean, I have, uh, you know, my sister-in-law, she lives in Newport beach and, um, is just absolutely killing it. You know, she's making great, you know, great money in my, in my eyes and, and working 25, 40 hours a week, you know, and, and making, you break it down hourly is making a lot, a lot more than, uh, you know, a lot out there. So it's just such a, it's a very, very, I think, scrutinized profession, but it is very, if you get in the right spot, it can yield, you know. But you, good- you got to work for that right spot. Like, you can't just Absolutely. be like, I'm cool with this. Like, you know, you have these these people that come in like, I'm going to serve because it's easy. It's, it's not that easy, but like you get those people like, all right, I'm going to serve, what, what have you. And then they just want to do that. Well, what's the next thing you can do? Can, can you bartend? Can, can you manage? Can you floor manage? Um, right. What's that next step? Because it's kind of, it can be school in itself, taking that next step. A lot of places have really good training programs for making managers because wherever you work, they, they want more managers. No matter what, where you are, eventually they're going to need a manager. They're going to need mm-hmm. someone to run that place. And if you've been there for a while, you know the business um, and you take that next step, all you have to do is ask. Literally, It'd be like, hey, I want to take this next step. What do I need to do? It's that easy sometimes as opposed to sitting, just being a server. Um, not saying that's a bad thing right. to, to just serve if that's your thing. But like if you want to do more, it's it's not hard. Yes, it might take some time, but it's not hard to get that, that uh, what's the, the word, like the, the bird in their ear. Be like, hey, this person's interested in this. They've been here a while. I trust them. They're, they're good at their job. What do we need to make them? take the next step. What, what do we need to do for them? And that's the thing for managers too, is you you have those people that want to take the next step, listen to them, no matter what, you're going to need more people. You're going to need people to, 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 to run your business with you. And if you have those, those good loyal people, use them, you know, don't, don't wait. If you go at your own speed, you're going to lose that person. You're, you're going to lose that person. Um, so you got to go like jump. I think on, on the both ball. sides of that. Yeah, for sure. I think on both sides of that, I mean, you say that, Um, and those people who I feel like there's a struggle whenever you have a star employee who is a star, but wants, doesn't want to, won't even voice that they want the next They They want it inside and their actions show for it every single day. Um, which is, which is great. But if you want something, speak up close mouth don't get fed you know sometimes right. you you have to put the the bird goes in, in both if i think johnny is over here and i i know johnny has a has a wife and his kids doing this he kills it every single day um but four years down the road he quits because he feel like he didn't have the you know didn't get the raise he wanted or um well my friend we the the raises come along the way but if you want something as a closed mouth does not get fed um, so you were saying that, you know, put that burn there, but you have to go get it too. I think some people wait around for it to come to them. Yeah. Good things don't come to those that wait. Good things come to those that fucking open their mouth and speak up. <laughs> go get it. Yes. You know, don't. And like, I think that, um, what you said last episode about put yourself in a room with people who are smarter than you and better than you and, 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 and want that. And I think that is very, very intelligent and, and um, should sink in and really take it to heart because even those who are smarter than may come across, you know, especially if I was always one that wanted to grind, I want to be the best in the room, whether it's, you know, on the wrestling mat 
or freaking running around serving tables or now where I'm at now. I wanted to be the best. And again, there were some times that I would let that kind of shut me down if I knew I was, wasn't, or, you know, I, I was getting outshined. It, it would shut me down. And for those of you don't do that either, you know, fight through that stuff. These are, these are things that are, were demons for, for a long time. I, I associate a lot of it to my, my wrestling career and my, my athletic career. Um, but you know, it, it crossed over sometimes and it's been a, it's been a battle at times. So just, um, yeah, you're not alone and just, you, you got to fight those and understand that, you know, sometimes losing is a part of life. Just got to have to roll with it and bounce back. What did Rocky say? He said if, oh, Mick said, he said, Rock, it's not how hard you get hit. It's how hard you can get up and hit back. <laughs> Somewhere, I've watched Rocky in years. My brother would, he'd be able to spit that line out like no one's business. Fair. Yeah. And, and all this kind of got me thinking, you know, we do have our favorites. We as like a management leadership team, we have our favorites. And it's those people that show up and do the grind. The ones that cover the shifts, the ones that, you know, if they need something covered, they get it covered. Like they, they go through that, like the rules, the process of like doing what needs to be done. They, they do their side work. They, they take the tables. They do what yes, sir, no, sir what like they do their job to the fullest you know those those are our favorite people the reason that we have our favorites is because they have our back and we're going to get their back more when you when you say like hey why is this person your favorite well they do a b c d e and f that that's why like yes we're gonna give them a little bit better privilege because they've earned it and that's kind of how you start kind of like working your way up earn that like not that teacher's pet but like that what's the word i'm looking for like being noticed you know like doing everything you can to the fullest you know especially like if you don't want to go to school start with that that is your school be a student of your craft do what you do try to do it the best and ask questions that's kind of i don't know that, that kind of got me thinking like through all this like hey yes we have favorites and those are the people that we're looking at so if you're not doing those things you're not going to be considered to like to move up. Yeah. I mean, you should look around and if, if that's where you're like, Oh, blah, 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 he gets special. She gets special privileges. Well, maybe they're not their perks, if right. you will, for doing your job, like you said, to the fullest. And if, if you're simply, if you can't do the bare minimum, which is your job and your job is outlined for you, bullet points and, Yes, in a pretty hefty manual, but it's right there for you. So, yeah, I think it's it's acceptable. And look around and, and understand what they're doing and what you're not and figure it out. Figure it out. If you have a, you're upset that he or she gets treated differently, there's a reason typically, um, typically for it. It's not biased. In a perfect world, yeah, we treat everyone the same. Legally, we do. We do. <laughs> we really do. We treat you all the same. We do. But maybe we notice this other person a little bit more. Just saying. <laughs> Just, Just saying. saying. Just saying. Do more than the minimum. No, I right. I, I feel you 100%, man. I feel you 100%. Oh, man. But, uh, I mean, yeah, we – wow, we hit a lot of topics in a really small amount of time. Um, so, I guess, yeah, let's uh, let's wrap it up. You know, hit the, the server tip – of the week you know mine is um it's really just do what makes you happy you know yolo people say it all the time yolo you only live once you only die once what, what have you but like, what's the point of living if you don't play hard you know like we work hard go play hard spend your money yes yeah, you should save some and all that good stuff put some in a whatever have you but you know spend your goddamn money have fun you know money in the grave does it drake said it yeah, 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 but you know, just I feel you. Save it. Mine ties in. Live. Mine oh. ties in. All right. Perfectly. Perfectly. Um, okay. What? Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay, hey, baby. All right. Yeah, that's what I wanted. It took a little second for you to follow up, but okay, hey, means that it's a good day to die, which is perfect with it ties in, which it's obviously 
it's a good day to die. Don't be afraid to fail. You know, leave it all out there. Um, they used to say it in, you know, when they went to war, hey, today's a good day to die. You know, make sure that you live it to the fullest. Don't take that in a dark spin, please. It's a good day to die. Okay. All right. I dig it. I dig it. So, you know, folks, tell your friends about the podcast. Like, let them know. They, they might find something that they can't resonate with that we say. We say a lot of shit. A lot. We, do. we say things. We say lots of things. So we say things over there, and it, it'll jump back over here, but we say things. We say things all the time. So, you know, tell your friends. Find us on your favorite podcast app. On YouTube, if you want to see our beautiful faces, these will get better once we go back to work and... Definitely. Like this it's, it's not just our women looking at us because they don't care. They, they've already lost by being with us. Subscribe to everyone. So you, uh, so you know when we drop, email us at lifeinsidecast.gmail.com. Any questions, find all our links at lifeontheinside.buzzsprout.com. Until next time, this is part two. Part two, baby. Hey, sorry about the hiatus. A little quick. Uh, Caleb's great. He tried. I was, you know, I had a little family situation to 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 deal with and a lot of cabinets to paint but lots of cabinets. we love you we will be putting out some more material we uh, thank you for those who, who are listening we do apologize if it, it took a second but we'll be bumping them out here shortly hell yeah till next time bye uh,